So you need a Skylake, do ya? Huh? Well, you probably were looking them up on eBay and that's how you got here in this video. But I'm gonna do the work for you. Hi there, it's Timmy Joe, and uh, you got a motherboard, do ya? A Z170, and uh, you're seeing this ad on eBay for like super cheap Skylake 6700K processors, huh? Like a hundred and some bucks. Well, I bought one. Let's, let's check it out. So if you go into the description of said eBay listing, all the way from China, um, you're gonna notice that it's not what they say it is. It's a, a, a 60 something, it's like a weird number, 69,000 something anyways. Uh, ES, engineering sample. And uh, yeah, see, engineering sample. These are not supposed to be sold, unfortunately, but they're selling off a whole whack of them. And uh, yeah, is this actually gonna be worth buying? Well, if you're in there, you need a special motherboard or at least a special, you know, range of motherboards. The uh, first generation, uh, you know, Z170 and all the subsequent 100, you know, whatever. But they have to be from a BIOS revision of, I think it's like August uh, of 2016 or something like that or before. And uh, this definitely doesn't have that, but it does have a BIOS flashback button. So hopefully we can get the right BIOS on here, the right mix of things to make this work. So is it worth it to buy this hundred and some dollar eBay 6700K wannabe engineering sample that they're not even supposed to be sold and actually use it as a day-to-day -day computer in 2019? Uh, I don't know, we're gonna go through all the things you gotta get through to do it, get the BIOS on this. Even finding one of these motherboards for a decent price is a hard thing. So, you know, that, that's its whole ordeal. We'll talk all about it anyway. So uh, come with your old pal, Timmy Joe. I'll hook this up for you and we'll see if we can get the engineering sample to do what it's gotta do. Oh yeah. Before we get to this, it's uh, one of the Deep Cool, our sponsor for today, and the uh, Castle 360 EX all-in-one water cooler. We just did some testing and found out that it competes at the same level as uh, the Asetek offerings in the uh, price range, although it is actually much cheaper. So you get to save some money and get the high-performance cooling of uh, an all-in-one liquid cooler, 360 mil, or you can go with the uh, 240, which is right here. That's the EX as well. Same pump, just a smaller rad. So uh, check them out. Links are in the description. Very high-performance cooling. And thanks, Deep Cool, for sponsoring videos so that we can buy, you know, uh, Z170 motherboards really good ones as we see and uh buy some engineering samples that we're going to test out so let's let's get to that today so did we were we able to do this well yes i can report that everything went rather swimmingly i found a bias revision that was from before August 2016. And I used the BIOS flashback button and uh, it kind of goes as such. There is a um, specific USB port that, uh, you know, on higher end motherboards where uh, you can put a BIOS on a USB key, plug it in to a specific port and uh, you rename the BIOS um, something specific. It's gotta be for the particular motherboard. In this case, it was like M8 something dot cab. And uh, then you stick it in that USB port and hold the BIOS flashback button. It starts to flash and then uh, it takes about maybe five minutes uh, while it flashes and the little LED on my USB stick was flashing as well so I could tell it was reading the data off of it. And then once it was done, you completely shut off the system and it said to uh, hit the clear CMOS button, which I did. And then lo and behold, the thing booted up. I did try booting it up without doing that. I knew that there was a later BIOS revision because I'd actually used this motherboard for something else and totally fried it. <laughs> I had a 6600K that I was working on the chiller and then I tried to delete it and this is what happened. <coughs> well, that was more what happened after I rage quit it because I snapped it in half on the vice, but it, shh, anyways. So I ruined a 6600K. That's why I went and bought this on eBay. And I thought it was a pretty interesting concept, you know, to buy an engineering sample. As long as it's able to do, you know, a few core things here, we have a pretty nice, sweet Skylake version. You know, that's, that's the same process they're still working on, 14 nanometer. And, uh, you know, get this all fired up on the test bench and I've done some testing. So uh, I guess we'll go through the BIOS and I'll talk over, um, you know, where it's at out of the box. And we can actually overclock this puppy. So there's a little bit of fun to be had. However, 
Uh, this doesn't make any sense, as we will see by the end of this video. E even at 125 bucks for a 6700K equivalent, uh, it's not a good price. And the uh, performance, you're going to get a better, well, the same performance out of a Ryzen 1500X. But those are actually expensive compared to the 2600, which will get on par performance with this per core. Oh, we'll talk about it by the end of the video. So let's come. Well, let's go over here. I got it all set up here. I've been doing some work. Let's uh, let's check out the BIOS. <sighs> all right, we're all loaded up in the BIOS, and we can see here that uh, we have that BIOS uh, that is predating the I think it was 17 originally. So now we're before August of 2016, and uh, we're on a genuine Intel CPU 0000 at 2.6 gigahertz. And our memory frequency is at 2400. We got 16 gigs, and this actually is an MP XMP profile of 3200. Uh, some crucial ballistics memory. So, uh, I mean, we're in the BIOS. It works. This is awesome. And we have a base of 2.6. But uh, here, we'll discard changes and exit. But it actually will boost to 3.4 gigahertz on all cores, which is not so bad to use out of the box. So we will get to some overclock settings, don't you worry, we're loaded up into Windows. I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, just show you a, a couple things. So, yeah, uh, it is that Intel Genuine CPU, 0000, 2.6 gigahertz engineering sample with a TDP of 95 watts and our core voltage is at 1.3-ish uh, there. And we'll run Cinebench R15 just to give you an idea of the out-of-the-box performance on this CPU. Because... There are a lot of people out there that might consider this CPU uh, with a much cheaper motherboard. You know, an H110, a B150, or an H170 motherboard. Those are motherboards that can't overclock, uh, or at least not, I don't know, We maybe, definitely not, probably not. So you need a Z170 motherboard to overclock this. It's actually multiplier unlocked which is really really cool was not expecting that i was expecting to have to bclk overclock this beast so we're just finishing up our cinebench run here and uh, we're gonna see performance somewhere in the area of 540 540 it was closer to 600 the last time i ran it but 540 is really bad that's like stock 6600 you know that's quad core no hyper threading core i5 performance from this thing so you probably better to find in a core i5 or go with ryzen let's go ahead into the bios and i'll show you what you can actually do with this thing uh because once you do do some overclocking it's sort of relevant but it's not it's not great so yeah well, let's look in the bios all right, so now we're back in the BIOS, and uh, this is actually a very high-end, it's like one of the best Z170 motherboards for Skylake, like, it's a Maximus hero, for God's sakes. This is pretty high-end stuff, but uh, remember, you'll need at least some variety of Z170 motherboard to do what I'm about to do, so your performance is going to be pretty negligible otherwise, so keep that in mind. Overclocking here, uh, you know, AI tuner, uh, you leave this to auto actually, because I have had r no success overclocking this properly if you set this to manual or XMP. You'd think you'd want to set XMP for your RAM, something's messing this up, don't use it. Now, uh, manual, I have had the computer boot with this manual thing set, but when I do that, it seems to ignore the vCore settings I put in it. And it sets the vCore to like 1.7, like some real high number. So what I've had success with is literally leaving this on auto. There we go. But set the sync all cores and the ratio limit to 4 two 42 unfortunately i was hoping that you know a, a good skylake will get near five gigahertz if not five gigahertz uh but more than likely like 4.8 is an achievable number 4.2 with this is as far as it'll go which makes it pretty limited in its like usability in today's you know modern age it's actually putting it on par with the performance of a first gen ryzen by uh, limiting the clock speed down to 4.2 gigahertz. So keep that in mind. Setting the load line calibration to like level seven and uh, maybe even six, and uh, then setting the um, CPU core voltage to manual mode and then 
four two. That is very high, unfortunately, for Skylake. This should do four point two gigahertz at like one point three, one point three five volts uh, maximum. But uh, what I found is this will not run AVX workloads unless that voltage is kicked up real high. I cannot get it to finish uh, Cinebench R20 at any less than 1.42 volts. So the, the, you're going to be running the CPU at a quite a high voltage for what it's, you know, it's not crazy, but you know, the number is yellow. So that means, you know, that there's, there's something going on there. And then you might say, well, what about your RAM timings? Well, sorry, we'll go back down here and we'll set the RAM voltage to uh, 1.35. Uh, that's the uh, XMP voltage on it for 3200 megahertz. But I haven't had very good success with uh, 3200 megahertz. In fact, the best I can do is uh, RAM frequency here is actually setting it to uh, 2666. So there is definitely some issues with this CPU. It's an engineering sample. It's not a finished sample. You should be able to run 3200 megahertz on this motherboard. Uh, you know, and I haven't gone into any like uh, RAM timing controls or anything like that, but it's just leaving it to auto. So like, well, 16, you know, that's, that's not bad cast latency. So we're actually getting a, multi a long lock multiplier, which is really cool stuff. So now we'll go over here and uh, I'm gonna save changes and reset. Yes, yes. And then we'll check out the performance of this thing now that it's overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz because it's actually pretty damn good at that level. So our temperatures are not bad, sitting at around 70 degrees. This is a you know fairly decent all-in-one water cooler. Uh, and you know I'm not even gonna pretend like I wanna delid this thing. It could be that it's an engineering sample that's soldered, but um, probably not with those temperatures, but, but I mean, the voltage is up there pretty high, but there we go, 891. That dramatically increased the score that we got. I'm gonna say that that initial score, something's going on there with the 3.4 gigahertz, maybe the voltage is, is like doing something, I don't know, but get, getting near 900 is a respectable score for a quad core uh, with hyper threading. And uh, you know, that, that's, that's actually not bad. So here I'll run single core CPU score. All right, since this is gonna take a minute, I'll just go over here and we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the, the prospect of buying one of these. Who's, who's this CPU good for? You know, if it's actually gonna end up being half decent, is it worth you buying one? Well, we're at $124.99 uh, with free shipping. Comes from China, it got to me in like two weeks. So pretty uh, impressed with the speed that this got here. And we see here that QHQF, that is what you're looking for. Uh, this, if you actually Google this code, shows that it's uh, you know uh, the, one of the later revisions. So we know that this isn't a really early engineering sample. But uh, so we see it's 124.99. But then you need a Z170 motherboard, right? Well, let's go ahead and try and find one. You know, because there's just no point in using one of the uh, non-overclockable uh, you know motherboards for this because it's just going to have pretty terrible performance. We're seeing pretty high prices. I mean, 88, like you might be able to land yourself a motherboard for around 80, like here's one that's 60 open box. Like I get weary with uh, motherboards that are this cheap, but maybe from 60 to 80 bucks, you might be able to land yourself a motherboard. And uh, you know, the CPU is $125. So how could you go wrong, right? Well, I mean, look at this. Ryzen 1500X will match the performance of this. Maybe this is a little bit faster, this engineering sample, like this much. That's not even the argument I'm gonna make. We switch this over to the Ryzen 2600 in the States is now cheaper with two more cores, four more threads. $119.99 you can get a Ryzen 2600 with. And that, uh, like the actual speed per core is completely matched to this engineering sample. But the motherboards, you can buy open box or even brand new motherboards for like the same price. Uh, you know, they're not very great motherboards, but you can certainly go and buy this ASRock motherboard here, this B450M and put a 2600 on it and have a really great experience. So you can go buy new stuff with more threads, more, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, like warranty, more out of the box functionality. So buying this Skylake is just, it doesn't make a damn lick of sense at all. We're getting a CPU single core score of 179 in Cinebench. That's not bad at all. And a total score of uh, 981. Here we'll run through um, the Cinebench R20. Just we'll hear, uh, yes, we'll save that. We'll, we'll run through Cinebench R20 just to get you a score in this. All right, we're all finished up. We're getting a 2187 in Cinebench R20. That puts it on par with 
Um, so there's a 7700K, gets 24, so it's, yeah, that, that makes sense. This is probably, uh, you know, well, no, it doesn't. It's not even hitting the stock levels of a 7700K in Cinebench R20. So, yeah. So, what about gaming? Well, we got to test out at least a game or two. So, I'll fire it up. We got the uh, 2070 Super on tap over here. So, we can check out the gaming performance. If uh, it's worth playing games on this thing, we'll find out. So, just one second. All right, so we're about to jump into Apex Legends Season 3 with the Skylake Engineering Sample. And uh, you know what? 90, 80, well, with the 2070 Super I'm using to test this, I believe the FPS would be a little bit higher right now. I seem to remember always being over 100 FPS on the drop-in with this card, especially with the overclocks we've got, but... Uh, I don't know, with this new season, see, we're hitting over 100 frames a second now that we're a little lower to the ground. It's not bad at all. So, you know, as far as um, the performance on this, we see we're at 4.187 gigahertz or whatever there, and uh, CPU temperature is really good. And, of course, we have to drop here, which is never a good sign because people always drop here, and I end up getting destroyed right away. There, I killed two people with the grenade there. That's awesome. So yeah, this is really decent performance. 45 seconds, rings close. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a pretty awesome gaming CPU. Even if it is, you know, got some things. I don't know about video editing or like any complex loads, but uh, not a bad CPU so far. You know what the worst experience worst part of this is the mouse and keyboard i'm using so i'm gonna say that's a pretty good experience i'm about to i don't know but yeah i'm dead i'm squat anyways we're at 132 frame per second average on a 2070 super i'm gonna say that's pretty close at 1440p high uh highest results you know so it did really well i mean 130 some frames a second with the 2070 super at 1440p you know, that's that's incredible. That's great. That's a great gaming CPU, even at 4.2 gigahertz. But would I recommend this? No, not unless you get a motherboard, a Z170 specifically, that has BIOS flashback, or you know for a damn fact that it has an older BIOS on it, and you're just looking for something to fill the slot. Because I think we did better than if I was using that 6600K I was originally going to pair with this motherboard. It would only do like uh, maybe 700 in Cinebench. This thing almost has 900. That's pretty damn good performance. And we see there that paired with, uh, you know, the gaming performance paired with the 2070 Super was really, really decent. Thanks to Matt for donating that 6600K that, uh, you know, bit the dust. But that RAM on there, that Crucial Ballistics, he donated that to the channel. Thanks, dude. That was super chill of you. It inspired this whole video. So yeah, 6700K engineering sample from eBay for $125 turns out to be a pretty dang good deal. As long as you don't think about Ryzen, as long as you're willing to buy an expensive motherboard probably, or maybe you happen to palm one. And as long as you're willing to fiddle with some settings and overclock it, you can do pretty well. Uh, but you know, buyer beware. I don't know if the next engineering sample that comes from China would do as well as this one did, or if it would even work at all, because I just I can't guarantee that. But I'm pretty sure that the eBay policies would allow you to return it, because they were like bugging me when I bought it. Are you sure you want to buy this? They literally sent me an email saying, are you sure you have the right motherboard for this? I was like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. But anyways, I'm out watching Joe on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching this little video in Skylake. Engineering samples in 2019 still turns out to be a really cool deal. And uh, as long as you know what you're doing, it might work out. I'll see you guys later. Wow.